trucking in the 90s. It's a whole new ball game with new regulations, new players, and a new competition. The trucks of the 90s are different too. They're sleeker, more efficient, with smooth aerodynamic designs that slip through the air for greater fuel economy. But there is no such thing as a free lunch. Reducing aerodynamic drag increases the work done by the foundation brakes. Today's trucks place demands on brake systems that can be as much as three times greater than for the trucks of the 70s. Brake service has never been something you could afford to ignore. But with today's free rolling trucks, proper maintenance is more important than ever, especially with current emphasis on truck safety that is sure to result in more frequent inspections. And with working steer axle brakes, now mandatory on many vehicles, you have even more brake maintenance to consider. Brake maintenance and overhaul, a program intended to familiarize you with brake service common to our family of 15, 16 and a half and 18 inch steer and drive axle brakes. This program will be based on Eaton Brake Service Manual EB32 for 16 and a half and 18 inch brakes and for 15 inch steer axle brakes EB31. These manuals have exploded views like this one showing proper brake component nomenclature to help you identify the components we'll be talking about. Eaton manuals contain complete service instructions, so we won't discuss every procedure in step-by-step -step detail. Instead, this program will describe selected periodic maintenance and overhaul procedures. After viewing this program, you will be able to execute the precautionary steps that must be taken to safely prepare a vehicle for brake service, explain how brake adjustment is checked, and how necessary adjustments are made and verified. Describe proper use of the Eaton Brake Adjustment and Lining Wear Guide and define acceptable service intervals for the key procedures covered in this program. Let's begin by showing you a maintenance procedure you should be doing every week, checking brake adjustment. Please note that for Eaton Automatic Slack Adjusters, no periodic maintenance adjustment should be required after proper installation. Caution, improper installation may result in dragging brakes. Aside from initial installation, manual adjustment of Eaton auto slacks need only be accomplished at the time of any foundation brake reline. For a complete description of all installation and maintenance procedures for Eaton automatic slack adjusters, refer to Eaton service manual EB22. Checking brake adjustment is a simple two-step procedure. The first step is to verify brake setup with the system at rest. With no air applied to the brakes and the wheels securely blocked to prevent vehicle movement, measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the slack adjuster clevis pin. This distance must be 2 and 5 eighths inches plus or minus a sixteenth. Mack trucks and Eaton trailer axles are set to a different dimension and will not be addressed in this program. Remember, air chambers have limited stroke. This setting assures optimal pushrod travel and leverage forces for maximum braking power. If necessary, reposition the clevis to meet this setting. When within range, measure and record the exact distance. The second step in checking brake adjustment is to determine applied stroke. You will need the help of a friend at this point, but make sure you know someone who cares that your brakes are working properly. Keeping your hands clear of the push rod and slack adjuster arm, have an assistant make and hold an 80 PSI brake application. Again, measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the clevis pin. Record this distance. When you subtract the at rest dimension from the 80 PSI application dimension, the difference will be applied stroke. Compare applied stroke to the values in the service manual. If the clevis moves beyond the maximum, the brakes require adjustment. When excessive applied stroke shows a correction is necessary, Eaton brakes are adjusted to achieve proper free stroke. The only difference between free stroke and applied stroke is the method used to move the slack adjuster from rest. Applied stroke is measured under an 80 PSI brake application. Free stroke is measured using a lever to move the slack adjuster. With a large screwdriver, Pry the slack adjuster in the direction of application until the shoes contact the drum. Measure from the face of the air chamber to the center line of the clevis pin. Record the distance. 
From this dimension, subtract the at-rest dimension recorded earlier. The difference between the two is free stroke. Compare the value you get to the range given in the service manual. For 15 by 4 steer axle brakes, free stroke should be between 3 8 and 1 half inch. For 16 and a half or 18 inch drive or steer axle brakes, it should be 3 8 to 5 8 of an inch. If free stroke is outside the acceptable range, adjust the slack adjuster. For manual slack adjusters, depress the locking sleeve on the adjuster nut and turn it in the direction required. Turning clockwise will decrease free stroke. Counterclockwise will increase free stroke. After making the maintenance adjustment, be sure that the locking sleeve has returned to its locked position. Remeasure free stroke and adjust if necessary until an acceptable stroke is attained. For automatic slack adjusters, please refer to Eaton Service Manual EB22 for proper proceedings. Eaton appreciates that not everyone keeps a service manual and tape measure in their truck. So we have come up with a convenient pocket-sized tool to make adjusting your Eaton brakes even easier. Using the Eaton brake adjustment and lining wear guide, you won't need a ruler or service manual, but you still need a stout screwdriver and a good friend. The guide is designed for use on Eaton 15-inch steer axle brakes and 16 and a half or 18-inch steer or drive axle brakes. It's not intended for Mack vehicles, trailer axle brakes, or vehicles equipped with automatic slack adjusters. Illustrations and instructions for use appear on the guide with markings at appropriate distances to eliminate the need for a measuring tool. Although there may not be room to correctly position the guide for every possible brake configuration, it certainly fits in a shirt pocket better than a service manual. Use the front side of the guide to determine when your brakes require adjustment. After verifying the at-rest distance of 2 and 5 8 inches with this scale, applied stroke is checked against these maximum values. With the guide positioned as you see here, compare Clevis pin movement under an 80 psi brake application to the correct maximum mark for your air chamber size. Movement past the mark tells you your brakes need adjusting. The other side is used when an adjustment is necessary. The color-coded scales are used to set proper free stroke. The gray scale is for 15-inch steer axle brakes, and the blue scale is for 16-and-a-half or 18-inch steer or drive axle brakes. With the guide positioned as shown, free stroke is checked using a lever and is increased or decreased as necessary. Another helpful feature is found in the lower right-hand corner of the backside. This small tab and black rectangle can be used to determine when your shoes must be relined. We'll show you how that's done later. Five copies of the brake adjustment and lining wear guide were included with this program. If you need additional copies, they can be ordered from any Eaton regional office or by calling 1-800-TCM-HELP. After making a brake adjustment, Verify that the brakes are not dragging by rotating the wheels or by tapping the drum lightly with a hammer while listening for a sharp ringing sound. If the brake cannot be adjusted to the recommended free stroke without drag, it's a sign of trouble somewhere in the brake assembly. Check for an improperly assembled brake, improperly riveted linings, damaged shoes or linings, or excessive drum out of round. You must verify proper brake operation after making an adjustment or any other repairs. Have your assistant apply the brakes to 80 PSI and hold. Check all airline fittings and air chambers for leakage. Apply and release the brakes while observing the operation of the slack adjusters on each axle. As the brakes are applied and released, the slacks should move in unison. If this is not the case, Look carefully for a clogged line or bad air chamber that could prevent this and take corrective action. Drive the vehicle at low speeds in a safe area and make several brake applications to verify safe operation and lack of pulling, grabbing, or noise. If you notice any, investigate and repair the problem before releasing the vehicle for service.